Not easy. All right, shoot. Okay. Tap, tap, tap. The rat's footsteps could be heard slowly dragging himself across the basement of hill. Blood streaked the floor, leaving a tail-like trail from where he has been. Suddenly, the cat plunged, swiping her razor-sharp claws through the rat's greater omentum and into his liver. Blood squirted out of the rat's torso as he fell to his knees as his small intestine snaked out of his... Celebrity! <laughs> <laughs> I'm a forensics so major, okay? This is... Barely, this is yeah. So <laughs> Anyways, of his abdominal pelvic cavity laying... <laughs> I can't. Okay, lay parallel next to the long, thin blood trail as the rat's whiskers rose and fell for the last time with his last struggled breath. The cat snickered in a crazed, maniacal laugh, transforming back into a rat. The skinwalker couldn't help but smirk with his ghost white teeth before he returned to scurrying across the cement. Unbeknownst to him, his next victim would require a much larger transformation. Five feet of hill students' flesh. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. I do watch a lot of horror podcasts. I guess you do. It's like funny. That was good. Thank you. Excellent. I tried my best. I really did. A little plot twist. Ethan. Ethan was gone, wasn't he? Dino. Uh, The bar is high now, but yeah. you can make, you can cross it. definitely not gruesome. Oh. Sorry. That's the point. It's more of just a, uh, I don't know. Uh, once a beacon of education, the school building simply named Hill bore witness to more than just the innocent pursuit of knowledge. It harbored a dark secret one that echoed through its corridors long after the last bell tolled. Decades ago, Hill was a haven for scientific inquiry, attracting researchers from far and wide. Among them were a group of scientists who delved into the depths of cruelty into the name of progress. Their experiments on rats knew no bounds, pushing the limits of ethics and morality in the pursuit of knowledge. Hidden away in the bowels of Hill, these scientists subject, <coughs> excuse me, subjected the helpless rodents to torturous trials, seeking to unlock the secrets of the mind and the mysterious of behavior. The mysteries of behavior, sorry. Um, their methods were gruesome, their practices abhorrent, but they cared not for the suffering they inflicted. Yet as time wore on, whispers began to spread among the walls of hills, whispers of anguish and despair, of unseen eyes watching from the shadows. The rats, subject to such horrors, did not pass quietly into the night. Their spirits lingered lingered, twisted by pain and resentment, bound to the very place where their suffering began. Years turned to decades, and, once a, and the once thriving school fell into despair. Students became, came and went, un, unaware of the dark legacy that lurked within its walls. But as the years passed, strange occurrences became commonplace. Objects would move on their own accord, whispers echoed through the empty halls, and chilling apparitions were glim <coughs> glimpsed in the dead of night. It wasn't long before rumors spread among the students, tales of a haunted school where the ghostly remains of tortured rats roamed free. Some laughed it, off, laughed it off as mere superstition, while others dared each other to brave the depths of hill after hours. Among the bravest of students was Sarah, a curious soul with a penchant for the macabre. Intrigued by the tales of ghostly rodents, she embarked on a quest to uncover the truth behind Hill's dark past. Armed with nothing but a flashlight in her courage, Sarah ventured the heart of the abandoned school, guided by the faint whispers that beckoned her onward. As she delved deeper, the air grew thick with the weight of suffering, and the walls seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy. Finally, Sarah stumbled upon the forgotten laboratory where the scientists had conducted their vile experiments. The room was bathed in an eerie glow, illuminated by the faint light of the moon filtering through the cracked windows. And there, amidst the debris of broken equipment, she saw them. Ghostly rats, their spectral forms twisted and contorted by the agony of their past. They scurried and skittered across the floor, their eyes glowing with baleful light 
as they regarded Sarah with a mix of curiosity and malice. But instead of fear, Sarah felt a surge of empathy for these tortured spirits. She saw them not monsters, but victims of cruelty and injustice, trapped between worlds of the sins of their captors. With a heavy heart, Sarah vowed to help them find peace, to free them from the chains that bound them to this cursed place. As she whispered words of solace into the darkness, she felt a shift in the air, a sense of release as the ghostly rats faded into the ether, their tor tortured souls finally finding rest. As dawn broke over the horizon, Zeri emerged from hill, her heart heavy with the weight of what she had witnessed. But she knew that she had done, nothing, that had done something good, that she had helped the right of the wrongs of the past, <clears throat> excuse me, that she had helped to right the wrongs of the past and bring closure to those who have suffered so unjustly. And though the whispers of, haunted, of the haunted school would linger for years to come, Sarah knew that the spirits of Hill could finally rest in peace, their legacy of pain and suffering forever banished to the annals of history. All right. Good. Cindy. shadowed basement where sinister experiments once took place many years ago in the depths of this basement shared witness to the chilling experiments conducted on uns unsuspecting rats it was a place where fear dwelled where the boundaries of morality blurred and where the echoes of the suffering rats still linger the experiments were twisted devised by minds consumed by curiosity and lacked empathy once one such experiment involved a cruel placement of cats on top of caged rats, forcing the tiny creatures into a state of primal terror. The goal, to unravel the depths of fear, to dis dissect its very essence, regarding of the cost. As the sun dipped below the horizon each night, casting long shadows over the silent hill, a basement stirred with unseen vengeful, vengeful lists the last soul to depart the hill reported hearing faint but unmistakable sounds coming from the depths below. Scratching, scraping, and haunting squeaks of unseen creatures. Whispers began to spread among the locals, whispered tales of the basement's dark secrets and the tortured souls trapped within its confinements. Rumors twisted and turned like contorted roots. Some claimed the noises were merely the echoes of past experiments, forever etched into the very walls of the basements. Basements, sorry. <laughs> Others spoke of something more sinister, of vengeful spirits seeking retribution for the horrors inflicted upon them. Those brave enough to venture near the a venture near hill at night did so. Sorry, I lost track. <laughs> did so with fear their hearts pounding in their chest as they dared to peer into the darkness below. Yet no matter how hard they tried to dismiss the tales as mere superstitions, the sounds persisted, growing louder and more insistent with each passing night. The basement of Hill became a place of whispered legends, a realm where the line between the living and the dead blurred, and where the sins of the past clawed their way back up into the presence. For those who dared to listen, the scratching and squeaking served as a chilling reminder that some horrors refused to stay buried. <laughs> All right, thank you. Pablo. not know how much detail Crawford wanted, so I wrote uh, three scenes. Um, <laughs> not with dialogue, just oh. the basic preference. Pre uh, so as an intro scene, there's, there's just a... There's a script. Well, Good. A three-act play. Okay. Right. I was hoping it would be on the screen. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, first off, before we even a title card, we just have a scene of the students messing around with the rats in the basement of Hill. Um, this is critical because in the following scenes, I want pictures of that scene as like a history project. Um, but anyway, they're doing their experiments as you all have described in very gruesome ways and I do not want to. Um, but anyway, in that process, two specific rats, one gets a scar and the other one gets burned. 
Um, and those are the rats that will become ghosts in the rest of the, 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 the story. Uh, <laughs> then after that scene, we get just a title card. Uh, my bad title is Haunted <coughs> Mouse on the Hill, based on the board game Haunted House on the Hill. Yes, I know mice and rats are different, but I couldn't think of anything better. Um, as for the other two scenes, one takes place in historical geography, the class. Uh, we're doing a project on the buildings on campus, uh, so that's what I thought of. Uh, and the student that does the project on Hill uh, just talks about the departments and then takes a long pause when he talks about the psych department and what they did in the basement. Um, and then on his slideshow, he has pictures from that previous scene uh, and of those rats being scarred and burned. Um, as for the third one, it's a local history class. Um, definitely not taking inspiration from real life. Um, <laughs> where uh, the professor tries to, um, with a bit of humor, uh, tries to tell ghost stories because it's a Monday class and people are tired. Um, and one of the ghost stories he tells uh, is the rats at Hill. Um, and he, <laughs> he says, um, that uh, although he personally hasn't experienced it, he will, uh, the alumni tell stories of it happening to them. Um, and then the camera pans to like three or four students talking about the, a project that is due at midnight that day, um, and that they decide to stay in the building to work on the project. And that is the three scenes that I wrote. All right, and they're, they're doomed. Yes. Um, thank you. Now, one of the things I, I don't think I mentioned when he was here, uh, Mr. Steiner was here last week, was that we had rats in the basement of Hill, but Hill Rats is also sort of a, a, a fond nickname for students who spend a lot of time here. Uh, so we call them, it's, you've heard of gym rats, haven't you? <laughs> People who spend their lives you know, working on their sports in gyms, while well, our Hill Rats are always up here working on history. So. We got some hill rats in here, as a matter of fact. So, all right. Uh, Renee's not here. Alexis. Mine's probably gonna be one of the most slightly hard because it's not very gruesome. <laughs> well, we need a break. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose I should have made the assignment that you've got to write the. As Maddie did, she said she's a um, forensics major. And so you should have written it in the voice of your majors, which would be a bit interesting. What's your major? Pharmacy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Deep within the historic Hill Building at Ohio Northern University, there lurked a rumor so absurd that it made the tales of ancient battles seem mundane. Legend has it that the building was haunted by ghostly rats with a love for cheesy jokes quite literally, as they were rumored to leave tiny cheese slices in students' backpacks. On one particular stormy night during finals week, a group of students decided to brave the haunted halls of Hill for a late night study session. Among them were Cindy and Grace, who were both electrical engineering students with a passion for unraveling mysteries from the past. Cindy, armed with her knowledge of circuits and sensors, was determined to uncover the truth behind the ghost rats while Grace, convinced that the rats were a diversion to keep students away from hidden historical artifacts, eagerly joined the investigation. Mm. Alexis, who was a pharmacy student with a knack for solving puzzles and a love for debunking rumors, also joined the group. She was armed with a flashlight and a bag of snacks, just in case, because they are essential. Alexis was determined to find out the truth once and for all. As they delved into their textbooks, the lights flickered and the sound of tiny squeaks filled the air. Suddenly, translucent rat shapes appeared, zipping around the ghost, or zipping around the room in a ghostly frenzy. But instead of shrieks of terror, the students burst into laughter as they realized the haunting was just a prank organized by the Hill faculty department, who was rigged up remote controls ghost rat puppets for the campus-wide laugh. Cindy, Grace, and Alexis joined forces to solve the mystery behind the prank, uncovering a hilarious plot that involved a stolen wheel of cheese from the cafeteria. <laughs> and a secret stash of rat costumes in the hill basement. The legend of the ghostly rats of, hill, of the hill building transformed from a spooky tale to a hilarious reminder that even history has its playful side. <laughs> All right. That is a fantasy to, to think that uh, the hill faculty could figure out how to make animatronic rats work. Uh, I mean, possible. I mean, I, you noticed I couldn't get the uh, yeah. computer to work. Well, that was written before that happened. So. The rats don't know about that yet. The rats don't know about that yet. Grayson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I always my road drive to class. I did 
Okay. Uh, bring that next week. We, you, you got the general idea talking about the rats and hill. We should take people down to see the rat lab. It's messy. It is messy. It's got all sorts of scary stuff in there. All right, Lachlan. Many students know about the old rat lab in the basement of Hill, but few know its true purpose. The lab was uh, simply cover cover for a more uh, repeated the word purpose again uh, for a more sinister purpose. The rats brought to Hill under the guise of scientific discovery were, in reality, fed to the university's power plant. Thousands of rats were shuttled from the holding pens in the lab and taken through a subterranean door in the furnace room to feed the fires and generate electricity for the university. <laughs> Over time, those working in the power plant began to notice odd occurrences, claiming to hear scurrying in the dead of night. When students started to complain of mysterious bites, the university administration took action, moving the engineering department out of the power plant. Eventually, the plant was no longer needed to supply the campus with power, and the rats were discontinued for cleaner sources of energy. The power plant was converted into offices, and several university departments were housed inside. However, tales of paranormal experiences began to emerge once again, and the administration moved everyone out of the power plant and had it demolished. Perhaps the souls of the rats sought refuge in the walls of Hill as more rumors of ghostly skittering have emerged. The administration may once again be forced to demolish a building cover of the horrific carnage of the university's past. <laughs> All right. Out there where the parking lot is, there used to be a power plant, and then it was um, uh, purchasing services. So it was, didn't look very good. Uh, our Dr. Lomax called it the crack house. Uh, but There is a door in the basement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Ashley's not here. Noah. Uh, Noah's not here. Abby. Yeah, right here. Oh, Noah is here. Yeah. Take the shirt off, Noah. Go Oscars! All right. Now, where'd you get that? Uh, I found it at Goodwill, actually. <laughs> that is Goodwill. Yeah. Oh, did, did everybody see it? Stand up. It says Nebraska. Huh? Go Oscars. Can I get bonus points for that? <laughs> you probably should. All right, I'll take it. All right, so mine is, the rats in hell have been eating at the foundation and the supports of the building. <laughs> the supports of the foundation being weak are the reason that the president wants hill to be torn down. After years, the rats eventually die, but there are still signs that rats have been eating at the foundation of the building. Students have also been hearing noises coming from the walls, and crews were brought in to see if there were any more pests in the building, but nothing was found. Professors find papers and boxes in their office with bite marks, but there's still no sign of any life in the building. The university had to think outside of the box to fix this problem, so they decided to bring in the Ghostbusters to the exterminate the ghosts of the rats. <laughs> That's all I got. All right. <laughs> all right, Abby. Is she here? Oh, yeah, she's here. All right. Um... Baseball game? Or is that the rats? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Can I just did a short story. Um, my eyes grew heavier as I could feel the weight of four hours of blue light settling in my eyes. I hear the chapel's bell ring out at the third chime. Class in five hours, I sighed to myself. I should probably try and get some sleep tonight. I shove my laptop in my bag and throw away the last of my Taco Bell wrappers. Maybe I should try to get to the gym tomorrow, I think, as I throw my bag over my shoulders. I exit the computer lab, but as my fingers graze the light switch to signal my final departure, all of the computer screens flash from a deep black to a lightning blue. A deafening wave of buzzing smashes against my ears as I drop to the floor, slamming my hands to my ears in an attempt to save what little is left of my hearing. And then suddenly silence again. I take a second to gather my bearings, thrashing my head about the room to see what might have caused, been the cause of such an occurrence, but my eyes are met with only darkness. Walking out of the lab, classroom, my heels click faster on the linoleum tile floor. My chest hitches as the fear settles in a deep pit in my stomach. I know the exits of this building. I've used them many times before, but not this late. There is still a remnant of ringing in my ears, but I can tell there is a new sound growing closer. It's like a scratching. An animal must have gotten trapped in the building, I thought to myself. But it's not just coming from behind me. It's surrounding me from all sides and above, filling my bones. I pick up my pace, hoping the direction I am heading is the right one. I crumple in pain as I slam into the door. 
I pause in a wasteful moment to grab my head. I can feel the warmth tra traveling down my face as I pull my hand away, sticky with my own blood. The scratching is on top of me now as I turn and slam the handle of the door. This is it. I finally made it out. My body hitches as all the weight is stopped against the thick glass doors. It's locked. Why would they lock Hill from the inside this late at night? I turn to see what is producing the now squeaking noises. My chest flying up and down as I turn to meet darkness. There is nothing there, but it sounds like whatever it should be or would be would be right in front of me. My shoes slip in the glossy pool of red that now surrounds me as I go to lean on the nearest wall. The amount of blood I've lost is catching up to me. I slide to the floor as the loud screeching grows quiet, more quiet around me. Heavy, heavy pounding in my head wakes me up, but I cannot open my eyes. My shirt is heavy and cold from the blood and the icy sweat. It sticks to the metal table below me as I try to move my limbs, but to my surprise, I appear to be strapped down, only able to move my head back and forth. I peel my eyes open and assess what I can of the room around me. The dim light still piercing enough to split my head open once more. The air was cooler and heavier here, but it still held the traditional dank smell of hill, a mix of history and the mold. I must be in the basement, I thought, before my adrenaline faded once more and I returned to unconsciousness. <laughs> we don't have any mold. We don't have a dank smell, smell do we? A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Kyle, that's what the president said the first time she came over here. Oh. <sighs> but she was in the room downstairs that hadn't been open in two years, so. Anyhow. As midnight fell on Ohio Northern's campus, a crowd of people could be seen emerging from the woods surrounding the ancient hill building and gathering on the front steps. All right, pledges, the fraternity president <laughs> yelled. Your final initiation task is to make it through the old hill building and ring the bell. If you succeed and make it out alive in one hour, then you'll officially be an Alpha 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 brother. <laughs> Zach looked at the withered and crumbling building. Through, throughout his initiation, alums had told stories about the hill building. Apparently it was supposed to be destroyed years ago. But every time a company contracted to demolish the building, something strange would happen, <laughs> leading the crews to abandon the site. He thought to himself, they're just making stuff up to get in my head. Ringing that bell? will be a piece of cake. Time starts now, the president yelled. All the underclassmen quickly rushed in through the front door and into the decrepit structure. As Zach pushed his way in, he was immediately hit with a thick scent of formaldehyde. He ignored it, though, and rushed up the stairs alongside his fellow, fellow pledges. The old floorboards creaked and groaned as everyone raced across them. Finally, the group reached the only entrance to the bell tower, a tall, rusted ladder bolted to the concrete walls of the staircase with a hatch at the top. Zach reached his hand towards the ladder before he felt a tug at the back of his shirt. Out of my way, Rodney said as he yanked Zach back. I've got to be the first one to hit, ring that bell or else my big will kill me. Everyone watched as Rodney quickly scaled the ladder and punched the hatch open. Yeah! Rodney cheered, expecting fanfare from the other frat members waiting outside the building. However, his triumphant roar only echoed alone through the night. He looked down from the bell tower to find that all the upperclassmen were gone. Hey, he yelled on the hatch, they all ditched us. The pledges looked at each other, confused and bewildered. Whatever, Rodney said. I guess I'll just need to ring this thing loud enough for them to hear it. He quickly whipped his leg around and kicked the bell as hard as he could, causing the entire building to shudder with the noise. All right, who's next, said Rodney, as he began climbing down the ladder. Suddenly, a rumbling noise could be heard from the basement. Rodney froze and all the pledges turned around. The rumbling was quickly accompanied by the piercing sound of squeaks and the scampering of a tiny, thousand tiny feet. Zach peered down the staircase and couldn't believe his eyes Thousands of ghost rats were racing up the walls and coming up from the basement through the floors. Panic ensued, and Zach raced up to the third floor. The other pledges realized what was happening and quickly followed. Hey, wait for me, guys, hollered Rodney as everyone sprinted through the halls. Everything was a blur as Zach ran towards the second staircase at the other end of the building. 
As he descended, Rodney's screams could be heard and frantic squeaks of the, of the rats grew even louder. At the base of the staircase, he saw an emergency exit, dimly lit by a flickering red sign with rats climbing up the walls all around it. With zero hesitation, Zach ran as fast as he could towards the door. He heard shrieks from the phantom rats and felt tiny claws scratch his body as he ran past. He slammed through the door and fell onto the cool grass outside. Zach turned around and saw the other pledges pouring out of the exit, screaming and swearing as they fled the building. Hey! said the history professor Russ Crawford as he ra ran out of the woods. What's going on? The pledges all rushed to him at once, blabbering and yelling of all the insane things they had just witnessed. A smile grew on Crawford's face. Well, he said, spreading his arms out, I guess we're going to need to do this the hard way. His body began to levitate and his eyes started glowing <laughs> blood red. Thousands of rat souls started pouring out of the building and swarmed the students. The pledges were no match for the flood of rats as they were dragged back towards Hill. Zach was knocked to the ground by the horde and felt tiny teeth gnawing at him, pulling him towards the building. He quickly dug his hand to the grass and looked up at the maniacally laughing Crawford. Why, he screamed, why are you doing this? Crawford looked down and levitated towards him. I did what I needed to save Hill. And now, the pack is hungry. No! Zack screamed as the rats completely enveloped him and dragged him into the dark halls of the ancient building. <laughs> Come on! I didn't say go, Huskers. No. <laughs> it's out of character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, still. Uh, Jacob, speaking of ringing the bell tower, uh, Jacob and Lachlan have been up there. Yep. And it's pretty pretty bad looking. Uh, it's not in the best shape. <laughs> yeah. It would take some work to ring the bell. It's, uh, some of the floors are sketchy. Yeah. Well, you need to use a hammer. Last time the bell was rung was when President Leshner resigned and the faculty who hated him uh, one of uh, Dr. Bob Davis, a historian, climbed the bell tower. He's a political scientist. One or the other climbed the bell tower and used a hammer to ring the bell. So, this is more of a story, or more of a pitch than a fleshed-out story. But uh, not only does administration haunt Hill Building, but a far more sin sinister entity occupies the basement. The people that beg alumni for money. Dun dun dun. Aiding the frightening staff are the tortured souls of the rats of Hill Building. They are said to roam the classroom seeking revenge on the students that made their lives miserable. Don't stay too late, for these rats will not discriminate between friend and pet prey. Just an administration cannot distinguish what majors and buildings they should keep or cut. <laughs> All right. Peyton. My laptop's dead, so I'll just read it from back here. All right. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, the Hill Building sits on the campus of Ohio Northern University, the oldest buildings on campus, the first building that Dr. Larry used for the Ohio Normal School. Like most buildings, old buildings, there's a lot of history that goes along with it. A lot of stories and events have passed through the building throughout the years. Some have never left. A couple of students were working late one, one night trying to cram in uh, some studying for Professor Crawford's exam. When they were finished, they started to leave, but they heard little footsteps. Too small to be another student or professor, they brushed it off and continued to walk off out the door when they heard more. They turned around and saw a bunch of ghost rats run towards them. They started scrambling towards the door, pushing each other and tripping over the book bags. The first student made it to the door and turned around and watched the ghost rats consume their or consume his friends. Frightened, frightened, he ran towards the police station to relay what he'd just seen. They did not believe a single word, so he took it upon himself to research what he experienced. To his knowledge, he learned that there used to be a research lab in the basement of Hill where they tortured the rats and performed experiments, which usually resulted in the death of in the death of the rats. They did this for years. He started to spread the word around the campus about the ghost rats who killed his friends. Now you'll never find any students working late in the Hill building. The university took it upon themselves to get rid of the ghost rats but could not find a solution after years of research, so they decided to download the building. <laughs> <laughs> ah, too true. <laughs> Grace. short story, um, Haunted Hill Riding Out the Campus. <laughs> right. 
You walk through the halls of the Hill Memorial Building on a late night. Of course you left your phone in class, and you don't want to risk it no longer being there in the morning. It feels strange to walk through these familiar halls near midnight. You didn't realize how bright these halls were during the day, as you navigate through a dark void. You are certain that the classroom you're looking for is on your right, and you reach your hands out to feel the walls until you find the doorway of the classroom. You step inside, and walk forward until you bump into the first row of desks. You sit in the farthest corner of the room, so you shuffle your way over. You lay your hand atop the desk, feeling around the smooth surface until your hand brushes against something on top of the desk. Relieved, you grab at what you believe is your phone. However, as your fingers latch around the object, it isn't the cold rectangular item you've been searching for. Instead, it feels warm and hairy. You yelp, quickly releasing your grip on whatever you just picked up. A screech is heard, followed by the pitter-patter of tiny paws scattering away from the scene. What was that, you think? You hesitate for a moment, but eventually make another attempt to feel for your phone atop the desk. Luckily, the next object you pick up is cold and smooth. You turn on your phone screen and read the time. Midnight. I don't get paid enough for this, you mutter aloud jokingly. You press the flashlight icon on your phone, and the room becomes illuminated with a blue-white light. You head to exit the classroom, and as you approach the exit of Hill, a small sound catches your attention. Screeching? Chewing? You can't seem to identify what the sound is, but you are confident that it is coming from the computer lab. Some strange external force seems to compel you to enter. Bravery? Curiosity? A lack of horror movie watching experience? You don't know what draws you into the lab. But before you know it, you're standing amongst the large monitors, searching for the source of the sound. First row, nothing. Second row, nothing. Third row, a wad of gum under one of the desks. You make your way to the final row of computer monitors, quietly moving the office chairs to thoroughly look under each desk. Screech! <laughs> That's my best screech impression. <laughs> <laughs> You jump back and hold out your phone's flashlight to see what made the noise. Aww, you say as you look upon a small chipmunk that had made its way into Hill Memorial. Ah. <laughs> Drift out of today's headlines. <laughs> How did you get in here, little guy? The chipmunk stares at you with blank eyes. It judges your soul. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's enough mystery solving for tonight. You slowly turn around, ready to head back to your dorm and get some much needed rest. Yet what you see will make you stay wide awake for many nights to come. A mass of dead rats lay motionless on the floor before you. The sight makes you jump back, and then a strong smell reaches your nostrils. The rotting, nauseating smell pierces your nostrils, <laughs> causing you to dry heave. You cover your nose and mouth with your hand, regain your composure, and remind yourself of what you must do. Escape. As you lift your eyes to find the exit, you no longer see the door. The computers, chairs, and desks are no longer visible to you either. You try to make sense of your new surroundings, turning your head to see where it is you possibly could be. You are inside of what appears to be a transparent plastic box, with hundreds of small holes on the walls, ceiling, and floor. Though the walls appear to be made from a thick, transparent plastic, all you can see beyond this cage is a black abyss. Hello, you call out. Is anyone there? What is this place? You place your hand upon the wall of your new jail cell, looking for something, anything, to explain what this place is or how you got here. You hear a large thud behind you. You spin around and are immobile with fear at the sight. A large, monstrous rat leers at you with repulsive, bulging eyes. Its fur is matted and its teeth sharp. You feel your heart beat out of your chest and your body grow weak. The rat lifts its head, sniffing the air. With each inhale and exhale from the rat, you feel wind blow past you nearly lifting you up and knocking you over each time it breathes. The rat lowers its head and stares at you once more. Unsure of what else to do, you try to explain your situation to the rat. Sorry to bother you. Do you know how I could get out of here and back to Hill? The rat didn't seem to understand you, but it flinched upon hearing the word Hill. <laughs> hill Memorial? I need to get back there. I need to leave. Upon the second mention of Hill, the rat responded with a screech. Can you help me? Do you know where Hill is? The third mention of Hill left the, rat, the large rat furious. It began to make loud, hellish noises. Your ears rang pain, painfully, and you closed your eyes tightly. This seemed to go on for an eternity, 
when suddenly everything went silent. You opened your eyes slowly. The large rat had become a ghostly, distorted figure. It appeared to melt in and out of its definitive shape, and you stared in awe as the large rat morphed into hundreds upon hundreds of smaller rats, just as disfigured as the large one had been. As the, <laughs> as the rats closed in around you, overwhelming you with their sheer numbers, you found yourself gasping for air, unable to fight back against the relentless swarm. Your life flashed before your eyes, and you began to question if this was a fate you deserved, or a fate that was inevitable. At least I won't have to worry about finals, is your last <laughs> thought. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's see, and Trevor's not here, so that's everyone, right? All right. Well, good job. Uh, some fanciful stuff. Um, what time is it? Uh, let's see. I wouldn't want to go down there myself.